All right, in this quick demo video, I'm going to show you how to anesthetize a laceration uh, to prepare it for skin closure. I have a much longer tutorial about how to do this uh, on my channel, and you can find a link to that longer, more detailed tutorial in the description if you would like. Uh, now, there are two main ways to do this. One way is called fanning, where we're going to inject in a bit of a fan-like pattern from the middle of the laceration in a, a fan-like pattern like this. Now to do this, we wanna make sure that this is a pretty clean laceration because if you were to uh, do this with the needle deep in the laceration like this, you could be pushing dirt and debris that was within the laceration further into the tissue. All right, so you only want to use the fanning method if it is a clean laceration or perhaps an incision in the, the operating room or a procedure room that uh, the patient's already been anesthetized before the incision was made. But to do the fanning method, we want to start in the middle of the laceration. We want to get into the subcutaneous tissue, go up towards the apex up here. Once you're there, you want to aspirate by pulling back on the plunger a little bit making sure that you don't have any blood coming into the syringe, which would indicate that you're in a large vessel. Then you're going to inject slowly as you withdraw slowly. Okay. Now, as you get to almost where the bevel leaves the, the subcutaneous tissue, you want to turn the needle, inject a uh, insert a little further, again, aspirate, and then inject as you withdraw. And then you're going to do the same pattern, that same technique in a fan-like distribution from that center point of the laceration. So again, apex, aspirate, and then inject as you withdraw. Okay, so that's kind of the, the fanning method that can be done if it's a clean laceration. Um, most of the time though, I'm going to do a lot of cleaning on the outside, get the skin surface quite clean, and then I'm going to use this method instead, which is just outside of the, the laceration skin edge, I'm going to, at the midpoint of the laceration, insert the needle down into the subcutaneous tissue, then I'm going to insert that needle up towards the apex of that laceration, in the subcutaneous tissue, I'm again, again going to aspirate, make sure that I'm not in a large vessel, then I'm going to in inject slowly as I withdraw that needle slowly like this. And as I get to the point where the needle is almost out of the skin, I'm going to very carefully rotate this, this needle around like this uh, so that it's now pointing the other direction, but I wanna be careful that I don't cause a lot more skin injury with the needle as I rotate that. And then I'm going to, again, do the same thing on this side where I'm inserting into the subcutaneous tissue parallel with the laceration up to the apex of that laceration, aspirate again with the plunger, and then inject slowly as I withdraw the needle. And there you go. So we would do the same thing on both sides so that both sides of the laceration have been anesthetized. We want to wait about one or two minutes or longer, a few minutes maybe. And then we want to come back and see, gently check with the tip of the needle and ask our patient if they can feel this, if it feels sharp, or if, as long as they don't feel any sharp feeling along the laceration, then we can go ahead and get to work with suturing or stapling, however we're going to close this. If there's any part that the patient can still feel, we want to inject more anesthetic into that area. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and follow along. Thanks.